Let's see what Destiny's up to, chat. Uh, these messages, I guess, leaked, not really. This appears to be the Destiny.gg relay, so I'm assuming that this is just him venting in his ch chat on his website, and it's getting relayed to his Discord, because I assume that's where most people are at. Um, I will read this. I've actually, I, I know the gist of this, but I've not actually read it from start to finish, so we'll get some good first reactions. He says... Um, I'll have a small convo when I'm back about things. I'm not going to nuke Melina or anything, but the last two months and two weeks have been a massive mind fuck for me. Watching her become obsessed with a toxic and abusive guy. When I visited Sweden last, he gave Mel an ultimatum to divorce me and then threatened to kill himself when she didn't do it. Among 20 other abusive, manipulative things he's done. And endlessly make excuses for him, so I'm out. Anyways, have fun with movies for three days. Good luck. See you on the 9th or 10th. Uh, he says, Josh, yeah, me discovering boundaries was the, was the death knell in this relationship. Why? This proves every point I've ever made. Girls can leave you for jobless, manipulative losers if they play their cards right. Smiley face. Yeah, I wanted a massive therapy session to see if I could express myself better and iron out some boundaries, but it's hard for me to ask for anything if I've become a pushover for so many years. Um, Yeah. Um, Mel just wants validation and this guy is willing to do anything for her 24 seven. He has no job and no life. Everything revolves around her. He changes his sleep schedule when she travels to talk to her constantly. I'll touch on that in a little bit, but yeah, the boundaries and everything in my relationship are absolutely fucking insane, but I never complain publicly because I don't want to make Melina look bad. I'm fine. This is the last toxic holdover I had from my past. So from here, it's all good for me. I didn't want to complain because I don't want to make my wife look bad because we're supposed to be in a married team, but she has no problem dumping on me to literally dozens and dozens of people over the past year's smiley face. So funny people saying another Bob seven, not realizing there were like 50 Bob sevens. So uh, I want to show you this guy real quick. Hi, what's your name? Melina. Can you get me laid? Yeah. When? Today. With? Your mom. I don't want that. Wait, who's, ooh, who's my mom? me yeah. see she was not impressed this entire time can you get me late yeah when today with your mom now she has shit tested him let's see how he re responds shall let's break this down i don't want that wait who's but then he has a joke he has a joke in his mind Ooh, who's my mom and there she goes she cracks a smile begrudgingly she doesn't even like him she thinks this guy looks weird he's a little bit off he's a little bit goofy He's asking me straight up about sex. I don't know if I'm into that. And then, against her will, he makes her laugh. Me. Yeah. And then he's in. Boom. <laughs> Meanwhile, Destiny, who, by the way, I want to say that um, I don't hate Destiny. What's, what's really weird about, like, I, wanna, I don't even know why. I have no idea why I want to like Destiny, because occasionally he says things that I really agree with. And occasionally he's willing to say things that are positive of the site. So he has like un unwittingly, unwittingly, un begrudgingly, accidentally um, found, found some modicum of goodwill from me. But he is a grumpy manlet. There is no denying this. Destiny is a grumpy manlet. And so when any guy comes along and is able to make make his GF smile. If his GF is in an open relationship, he's out. He loses by default because he's a grumpy man. Like I've never, I want, I want to say, and I'm being honest here. I've seen a lot of Destiny clips because they get shared a lot. He's very good at going viral. Um, I don't think I've ever seen him like laugh about anything. I could be wrong. Like he'll smuckle if he thinks that he's winning like an argument and the other person said something that he can count as like a blunder but like as far as like his general demeanor go he's like hunched over the mic like, yeah, you know, fucking like fucking trans girls say like stupid shit all the fucking time you know it's like you know anytime you hear some dipshit ass take it's always some fucking trans girl and i'm not saying that because i like hate hate trans girls or anything it's just like it's just like mumbling and like saying his points and he gets into an argument and he just gets really heated and starts like bouncing up and down like, rah, 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 rah. and then if they say something dipshit he like laughs and he's like wait a minute wait a minute and that's it it's like there's where is your mirth where is your source of joy and merriment steven where 
Where do you draw your inspiration from? How do you stay afloat? What propels you? I can't answer that question. I don't know. Maybe Factorio. I think that's it. Um, I don't know. It's strange. Anyways, I'll go back to reading. Um, but for Melina, the way to get closer to her has always been shitting on me because she loves the emotional validation of people making her feel every single problem in the relationship was my fault. Spawn because I had a toxic problem with blaming myself for every single problem ever in any of my relationships ever. So I figured if something was wrong, it was always on me to fix it. Smiley face. They seemed okay because three days ago, Mel was supposed to leave forever. This guy did something else insanely toxic and horrible. Then Mel kind of warmed up to what I was asking for. Then in a day, she forgave everything again, and now it's back on it. I told her that her and all of her shit needs to be gone before I'm back on the 9th. Yes, a good troll is me, spending five days off streaming Death Spiraling. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely epic. I'm kind of happy, to be honest. I figured he'd out himself and Mal would disengage, but she has been made more excuses for his behavior than I've ever seen in my life. It's insane. So, like, what I pick up from this is that she has a guy... Right, you have Destiny, and he's like hunched over. He's got like the high, the high shoulders, like that one guy on um, television, like the ninety-nine-year-old man who's been doing interviews and like overalls for like the last hundred years. And he's got those high shoulders, and he's like hunched over, and he's a grumpy Gus. Larry King, he's got those Larry King shoulders, and his wife is just like a a part of his his life i guess but then he goes out and he finds retarded women and he fucks them and then she goes out and she fucks guys and it's just like this sort of like incredibly passive relationship where they just sort of have an arrangement i guess she keeps the house clean and she's on there she's there for standby sex if he can't hook up with like a retarded woman in time and it's like the most mind-numbing, least romantically engaging association that you could ever possibly imagine. And I don't know how young Melina is or how old she is, but assuming she is, she has spent a considerable amount of her life with Destiny. And now it's like at a point in time where if you want to start making family plans, this is the, this is the, the place to go. Like you have to start making those decisions now. And I would imagine that Destiny is like, no, I don't want kids. That would interrupt me smashing retard box on the side and, and talking about trans girls on, on YouTube for money. So he's just like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then on the side, she has this retard. I'll put the retard on the screen so that I can make my point better. She has this retard who's like funny and kind of stupid and like a happy-go-lucky, kind of like a dog. And more, more importantly than anything, he actually really loves her and he, he stays up late at night and I think they're both Swedish. So he's there going bork, 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 bork at her on, on, on discord or whatever, late at night. And she's going bork, 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 bork back. And destiny is just sitting outside and he knows cause they're both Swedish. And she, he hears through the door of the cuck shed. Bork, 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 and he just knows that that's her talking to this guy again. And she, she is speaking deeply romantic, poetic borks that like he doesn't even understand, but which sound so romantic in a foreign language. And he's like, I'm completely losing out to this fucking guy. He's not even famous on the internet. He doesn't even... Uh, he doesn't even get a million views on YouTube. He can't pull a thousand likes on Zitter, and yet she talks to him all night how can this be so it's it's fascinating fascinating chat that he doesn't realize oh you can't really there is no love in a relationship where you're fucking other people <laughs> and uh women don't aren't usually down for that unless they're like seriously mentally ill um not even that, Lamau. He's lied about some about things she said to friends. Lied about things her friends have said. All to cut her off from friends and isolate her until the only friend group left is his. It's all super standard abuser 101 type shit. It honestly blows my mind. It works so easily on her. Smiley face. Melina side is the same for every single problem ever. You don't understand. Steven has hurt me so much. There is so much resentment and scarring that I need someone to build me up again. It's always some variation of this. I mean, that's true, though. 
like in certain relationships like when you know somebody especially somebody that you're in a relationship with if you have like a, a issue like a serious like problem with them you can get over that but it's kind of like scars in the relationship and it never really really goes away so if you know somebody no matter how many times you try to like patch things up like you never really get over those problems they just sort of get like like scarred over and then at a certain point it's just like there's so much baggage in that relationship you can never ever fix it so even if destiny and like his super like autism mind thinks yeah whatever we talked about it and then we fixed up because i'm a cool fucking guy you know she's gonna come back to me i think of the night like even in him in his mind if he's like yeah i fixed all these issues like we already talked about this and we agreed to move past it like the reality is, is that the relationship is is crucified to the fucking cross at that point. There's enough baggage and enough scars that it's like it never actually heals. So at a certain if your relationship is that tumultuous, even if you are like actively trying to retro like actively trying to mend things, it doesn't matter. At a certain point, it just like falls apart. Especially if you're going around fucking retards on the side and openly. That's just how it is. Just a cool guy. Um, it's always some, some variation of this. Uh, it doesn't matter her age. She won't grow until she learns to stop exclusively searching for validation and actually some responsibility for literally anything. It's cheating and stuff. I haven't talked about it though, but so much of the cheating in my relationship is fucking retarded. Like if I hook up with a girl and tell Mel the next morning instead of the beforehand, that is cheating. I mean, obviously... Like, that's one of the, the core tenets of, like, open relationships. That's how they sell it as being, like, a, a consensual thing. Like, you say, hey, Melina, I've got this retard side piece uh, stream fan that I want to smash. Can I smash her? And then she says yes. And then she's in on it. That way, if she gets hurt feelings later, you can just say, well, you said I could do it. Um, but if you just smash and say, well, surely you're okay with that. Then, then all she can say is either yes or we're broken up. Like, obviously, like, I'm not even a fan of these things, but obviously that's not acceptable even by that standard. Um, if I tell Mel someone is coming over to hook up and they come over, but I don't explicitly tell her we booked up because that's assumed, then that is cheating. If I, if I tell someone is coming to hook up and they come over, but I don't explicitly tell her we booked up, because that's assumed that is cheating. I guess if she, he says, I'm, I'm having someone over, but then doesn't explicitly say, by the way, I want to fuck her too, then that's also not okay, which was, was understandable. I, I assume you have to be explicit about things. All of these rules are one-sided, by the way, <laughs> which, I mean, I want to remind you, in case you don't know, Destiny has repeatedly joined the Kiwi Farms and argued with people in his thread that he is not a cuckold because there is consent in their non-monogamy. That is like his core tenement. It doesn't matter if she's sucking a million dicks on the side. He consents to that. So definitionally, epistemologically, he is not, according to the letter of the law, a cuckold. Checkmate atheist. That's like that's literally what his argument is. But now, chat. If you look at the chat in front of me, it says those rules are one sided. What does that imply? It implies that when she does go out and suck a million dicks, she doesn't even tell him. And based on the other rules of this relationship, that means that he can't consent to that. And therefore, under the actual letter of the law of cuckolding, that would make him a cuckold. Just saying. Um, anyways, I'm just dumping, venting. I made some serious mistakes and fucked up parts of this relationship, too. I'm definitely not perfect, but I've let public opinion just make it seem like I'm this horrible person. She's a perfect angel, and it really bothers me. Gonna fly. Peace. Oh, my God. I will read all of this, because I am enjoying this. I have a lot to say, which is surprising me. Um, I'm a pushover. All these rules are one-sided. If I tell Mel... Oh, wait, I... is this in reverse order? Oh, it is in reverse order. Okay, sorry, that's all of it. No, or this is in reverse order, so. Okay, yeah, I've legitimately cheated at least once in a really bad way, I'm not perfect. Well, I mean, that's that's the death knell of a relationship. I wanna say, and maybe you guys can disagree with me, because I'm, uh, I'm sure you will, some people will. I wanna say you can't recover 
from cheating. I think that once you cheat on somebody, that's like such a such a huge bag because then anything you do after cheating is suspect. Like every single thing you say, every story you tell, every action you take will always be held under the suspicion that he's done it before. So he might do it again. Like you can't, you can't, you can't fix that. It's over. Um, they says, but so has Mel. Okay. I just don't care about it as much. LOL. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly why this guy wins because this guy would care about it. He's over there bjorking at her and he is very in, impassioned about his bjorking and he would take it personally. And that's actually a point in his favor. Uh, I don't care about cheating because I don't care about people fucking whoever that I don't really like is someone hanging around that's trying to get my partner to cut me out of their life. That's an obvious step too far for me. That sounds like ownership, though. That's very possessive. Like, I don't care what she does. I don't care who she's fucking. I don't care if she sucks a million dicks or two billion dicks. I don't care if she tells me if she's sucking three million dicks. At the end of the day, after sucking that fourth million dick, I know she's going to come home to me and re continue to be my property like that. <laughs> I mean, that, I know he's trying to frame this in a way where he's like, I'm super cool. I don't care what she does. Five million dicks. What's six million dicks between friends? But it, it just makes it sound like she, as long as she, she can do whatever she wants, as long as she knows that I own her at the end of the day. Um, let's see. Where was I at? Uh, she has shit talked me to literally every single friend or person she has ever talked to. So, yes, I wonder why. Um. She always says, you cause me so much pain, so of course I'm going to talk to people who know you about it. That's fair. Uh, no, it's not. You shouldn't be venting about your partner to literally every single mutual friend you have. Do you have any idea how many friends I've lost over, this, over the years? Lol. Well, I mean... <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine that this fuck you up when this person's like... It's, it's just weird because it's like he's losing friends because... She's like shit talking him and he still decides. Yeah. Okay. I have this person in my life who is like an, like an active toxic. Like, let's just assume for the sake of argument that Melina has done all the terrible things and destiny is an angel, right? Like let, let's for the sake of assumption, say that he, for whatever reason has allowed her as this radi radioactive material to just sit there in his lap and spoil his friendship with other people for what reason unless the reason is as long as i maintain control over her i'm happy and then it doesn't make any sense like surely surely you would cut her off at some point and the only reason why he is upset is that this other guy is bjorking sweet nothings in her ear and he's losing control and that's pissing him off um, she can't and won't. I already look like the bad guy in every single interaction that's ever been public or talked about. Literally, leaks can only make me look better. No, I'm not doing a huge manifesto stream or anything. Yes, obviously, no. He will never admit, and this is the, the thing that pisses me off, um, is that he will never admit that open relationships are stupid, even after this shit. Because he, he doesn't want to be in a relationship where he can't fuck his fangirls. He'll never be enter into a monogamous relationship ever again. Uh, cause he, cause he doesn't want to close that door. So I think in the future, he's just going to be a, um, here, here's the downfall of this guy. He's going to enter into a, a phase, like a midlife crisis where he's just going to fuck all his fangirls and he won't try to like maintain any kind of formal relationship with them. It'll just be like a, a one night stand thing. And then he will absolutely totally be accused of rape or something. Cause you can't do that. You can't like fuck around with girls feelings. Uh, you will eventually you will hit a landmine and she will try to destroy you. <laughs> That's just how it goes. Um, uh, Eris got burned ultra badly over that Lamau. Uh, Britt doesn't know all of it. I've don't, I don't dump on my partner ever except in the past two weeks. I've almost never said a bad thing about Mel to anyone. It's whatever. I got my money back last week before therapy because I knew I'm writing what was on the wall. Normally I don't care about money, but after realizing she had that jobless loser move into her apartment for free without telling me PP. Pee -pee. Oh, so she has her own apartment. She has her own apartment. They don't even live together. So she can just have whoever she wants over, but she can't have this guy who she's falling in love with. That's not okay. She can have any, any number of guys she wants over at her apartment. So, cause they don't live together except this guy. 
He can't, he's living there. So now it's not okay because their polycule is divulging into a, a proper, like, multi faceted structure. And he's not okay with that. He doesn't want to share. Um, I felt really annoyed paying for anything for her because I was basically subsidizing this toxic loser. He definitely got a meal ticket, Lamau, but there's no way that relationship will last. Not moving for at least a year since I've got a lease. You'd be surprised. I remember fighting about red pilers so much about this, Lamau. I've never in my life ever worried about losing a partner to a car, to a, oh, to a Chad. Here, we see the Chad in his natural environment. It's such a funny video. <laughs> like, you can see the moment where it happens. Like, where she's like, okay, fine, I will do it. <laughs> um, it's a, that's such funny language to use, too. Um, I actually happened multiple times in my life now where it's the exact opposite. It's some jobless fucking loser that can shower her with attention 24-7 for months that ends up winning. I can't compete with that ever. Yeah, no shit. He doesn't even want to. This guy is actually showing affection to to my wife. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't. I can't show affection to my wife. That requires effort. Fuck that. <laughs> um. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say. <laughs> wow. I wonder why she's leaving. <laughs> Uh, he just, he can't compete. He can't compete. He looks at this and says, I just can't do it. I can't compete with this guy. He's too much of a chat, literally. Um, no, Lamal, she's just made some excuses slash retard message. Like, I understand why you feel that way. Sorry, I hope we can connect in the future or something like that. Of course, it's not healthy, Lamal. I will just do a quick 30 men talk or something and move on. LMFAO. Uh, here's a picture of the guy. As you can see, this man is a total Chad with all the, the right Bjorks to send. Um, anyways, have fun. Oh, wait. I'm going to have a small combo when I'm thinking about the nuke. Okay, I already read that. Okay, I already read all that. Cool, excellent, wonderful. Thanks, Steven. Very cool. Good luck with that. Um, looking forward to you being canceled in approximately three years from now. Uh, have fun with that. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.